Hey everybody, I'm going to try and get you some help on this comprehensive problem. So in part one, right, what we're given is we're given a post-closing trial balance. Those are the balances in um, the asset, liability, and equity accounts as of April 30th. So now it's May and we're going to journalize all of these transactions. And I'm going to do the first three to give you an idea of what we have. So I received cash from clients as an advance payment for services. I'm going to record it as unearned fees of $4,500. So I know that my first entry is going to be cash for $4,500. Cash is an asset which we increase with a debit. And unearned fees is a liability and that's increased with a credit. We always make our debit entry first. So on May 5th, I receive more cash. So I already know that that's going to be a debit to cash. And it was $24.50. And it was on account, which means there was an accounts receivable created for this client because I'm they're paying their bill with cash. Now what happens is that accounts receivable, which is also an asset, gets decreased with a credit. Again, I'm going to pay cash um, and for a newspaper advertisement for $225. Um, we're just going to put the av newspaper advertisement as a miscellaneous expense for $225. Expense accounts are increased with a debit. And what did we pay for it with? We paid for it with cash. And up here, I knew that I was increasing cash with a, with a debit here. I'm going to decrease cash with a credit. And you're just going to go all the way through until you have all of them finished. Once you've got all of your journal entries done, then you're ready to move on to part two. So in part two, right, it's saying using the attached spreadsheet. This is a hyperlink that when you click on it, it's going to download an Excel file to your computer and you're going to need that to post your journal entries. You're also going to need it when you get to comprehensive problems part four through six, seven through eight. Once you start working on that spreadsheet, keep it saved on your computer. You don't want to have to come back and do this work again. So now I'm going to go to my um, spreadsheet. Okay. Now, once you download your spreadsheet, you're going to notice that you have two tabs. One are your income statement accounts, and there's nothing in any of these. And that's because we close um, income and expense accounts at the end of the period, and you'll learn about that later. Right? But now I have my balance sheet accounts. And you're going to notice that a balance is already entered for you. Those balances come from the previous period's trial balance. So if you look back here at part one, here's your post-closing trial balance. Cash has a debit of 22,100, accounts receivable, 3,400, etc., etc. You get the idea. So when I go back to my spreadsheet, right, there's my 22,100 that we just saw on the trial balance. There was the $3,400 um, the 1350. Right? So now what I need to do is I need to make the journal entries for my, I mean, make the ledger entries for my journal. So my first entry was a debit to cash of um, $4,500. And that was on 5.3. And I'm just going to call that fees. And that was an increase to cash, which was $4,500. These um, two columns here, over here on the right, are your balance. So I'm going to say, I'm going to take the 2200 and I'm going to add the 4500 giving me a new balance of 266 in my cash account. You don't have to use the Excel um, uh, addition formula, you know, function. You can just do it on your calculator and enter 266 here. The other part of that 
um, transaction was a credit to unearned fees, which is a liability. So I got to scroll down till I get to my liabilities somewhere down here, unearned fees. So that was five, three, and that was, I'm just going to put unearned fees. And that was a credit entry of $4,500. Um, your liabilities have a nat normal credit balance. So I'm going to take, and I'm going to say equals my balance plus what my new um, amount was, and that gives me a new balance and unearned fees of 7000 Again, you could have just done it on your calculator, but now I'm done with that one. My next one was a debit to cash and a credit to accounts receivable. So I'm going all the way back up. You can tell your cash account's always your big one. And that was on 5-5, five, five, and that was um, um, payment from a client when they paid on their account. And that was um, $2,450. Again, I've got, a, I've got to balance my ledger. So I'm going to say equals that 26.6 plus my new amount gives me a new balance in my cash of 29.050. But they also paid on their accounts receivable. And so down here, I'm going to say on 5.3, I debited um, my cash. And I'm just going to put here same thing payment from client um, and so in this case I credited accounts receivable for 2450 well I had a debit positive balance 3450 I've reduced it with a credit and so now my new balance is still a debit because I'm not I haven't used up the whole 3400 so now I'm going to take my 3400 minus my 2450 tells me I have $950 outstanding in my accounts receivable. Remember that your debits are your pluses, your credits are your minuses. So I had a positive balance of 3400. The credit was a negative, gave me 950. All right, third one, miscellaneous expense. Well, an expense is an income statement account. So I'm coming over to my income statement account, income statement, and I'm going to look for miscellaneous expense. So miscellaneous expense, I debited 225. There was no previous balance, so I'm going to bring my new balance over. It's a debit of 225, and my credit was to cash. So I come up to cash. And that was on 5-9. And that was, um, it's not advertising. Nope, doesn't like that. Um, I'm just going to put a newspaper. Newspaper ad. Um, and so that was a credit right, of $225. Well, <clears throat> my debits add to my balance. My credits subtract. So I'm going to take the 29050 and I'm going to subtract the 225 and now my new balance in my cash account is 28825 so every journal entry is going to be moved to its appropriate ledger and you're going to carry forward the balance and the reason you got to carry that balance is you need to finish this part of the comprehensive problem so in part 3 here you're given this empty, unadjusted trial balance. And you'll notice that what it wants is it wants the debit balances and the credit balances. Those are the balances off of the ledger accounts that are on your Excel spreadsheet. And you look and you see, well, great, Professor, but they gave me no account titles. Well, <clears throat> here's the big hint. Go back to part one and look at this chart of accounts. You're going to see cash is 11, accounts receivable, supplies, prepaid rent, prepaid insurance. You're going to put these accounts onto this trial balance in the same order 
as they appear in your chart of accounts. That's a reason for numbering accounts, right? Generally, what we know is that um, all of your accounts in the tens, right, are going to be your asset accounts. Your twenties are going to be your liability accounts. Your thirties are going to be your equity accounts. Forties are liabilities. I mean, our revenues and 50s are expenses. So I'm simply going to come over here and I'm going to put them in the same order, right? Cash, accounts receivable, right? And I'm going to come right down through. This, these balances here are going to come from whatever your balance was, right? Off of your um, ledger accounts. So when I get cash, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my Excel spreadsheet. I'm going to find out what my balance was. Hint, that's not the right answer. There are a bunch more cash. Right? 28,825. I'm going to come here and I know that that was a um, debit balance and I'll just put zero because, or I think you can leave it blank and Cengage will still count you right. So the big secret is, is that once you've done this all the way down, this debit balance and this credit balance should equal. If they equal, then your trial balance, your unadjusted trial balance balances and you're finished. So hopefully this helped. If you have any questions, email me, you can text me, and you can always post to the general questions discussion. Good luck.